The two whirlpools, this is my model of, of what's happening in the world today. We have been told to expect this for a very, very long time indeed. We're talking certainly 2,000 years, probably a lot longer, a great deal of time longer than that. Because it's present within the Hindu tradition, it's present within Christianity, it's present in, in many different ways, in many different books. And it's been a big deal uh, in, in my life. My whole life has been led based on the understanding that probably just after I die, something major is going to happen of this type. But in fact, I think it's going to happen before I die. The, the, the timetable has been brought forward. And uh, most of uh, us hippies in the 60s were, were all for this. You know, We were hoping that, that there would be this big change. So what is this change? Um, it's hard to express to people who aren't already close to the understanding of it. It's a very subtle understanding. And it takes this, this, this idea that in every single moment, energy exists in an undifferentiated state. We don't differentiate between light and dark. It's just energy. As soon as we interpret that energy as this or that, we put a spin on it. So you, ca you could look at a glass and you could say that's half full or that's half empty. That's a clever philosophical game people play with their minds. But actually, how do you feel about that glass? Does it feel like you've got a lot left? Or like, oh, you've used up most of it. Then we're starting to engage the, the, the feelings. And when you think and feel something, it, it, it lines up this this attitude of being, which is a polarization. You're either more positive or more negative. Such moments of these are uncountable in their number. We hear somebody speak and their words are really neutral, but we interpret them as, on the one hand, encouraging. And so we might think they want us to move forward romantically because we want romance. Or we might think of them as negative words, because we're in a bad mood and we want to pick a fight with somebody. Both of those might be wrong. They might be just speaking neutrally. But we put it forward. We project our mood onto something neutral, and we turn it into something that it wasn't before. Before, it was undifferentiated energy. Um, now it's an attitude that we have to deal with. And this is life. This is an explanation of what's going on all of the time. We meet scenarios, we meet people, we meet challenges, and we have to meet them with an interpretation. We have to meet them with an attitude of being. No, no people, nobody has gone beyond that. Nobody can live neutrally not in every single moment of their lives. But those pretty enlightened guys, you know, they're realized beings, they live in that sense of neutrality most of the time. This is what Zen Buddhism teaches pretty good, pretty well. You know, like, whatever happens, oh, is that so? It's, it's an observer's neutrality. Um, un unless you get to the, the, the highest form of enlightenment, then you're going to have a preference at some point. And this preference is being examined right now in a way that has not happened before in recorded history. We've reached the threshold of humanity's measurement. We're being examined. Our species has had its time on Earth. How did we do? This is the examination. So when you're at school in junior you know the junior school you you eventually get to leave junior school and some guys go to this better school and some guy goes to this other school each of them would be wise to stay with that choice so if if you're actually a bit more intelligent you want to go to a better school where they they 
develop that intelligence and, and make you work. And if you're less intelligent, you, you don't want that. You don't want to work with your head. <laughs> you want to go to a technical college or something. Um, whereas if you're actually quite intelligent and they, they put you with the technical people that, that they don't have good conversation for you, yeah, you're in the wrong place. So what's happening with humanity now is that we're having a sort out. Those people that, that prefer an attitude to life which is based on the idea that there's nasty people and that we should be afraid of them and we're powerless against them and the world's a terrible place and there's nothing we can do about it. And, and what we must try to do is to get as much pleasure as possible, as soon as possible, um, and that pleasure and maybe comfort and security are the, the, the things that we, we go for in life and we have to be, um, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, so we need to be a better dog that bites quicker and harder than anyone else before they bite us. If that's what you choose, then fine, carry on choosing it. That's your business. You're, you're into free will. Choose that. And you choose that moment by moment. It's not that you can make that choice once and then you're free. No. You make it moment by moment by moment. And you will be tested with increasingly severe examinations, up to and including the temptation of Christ when the devil spoke to Christ and said, I can give you all of this, all you have to do is bow to me. You know, like the temptation of us is what we have to concern ourselves with. Are you tempted by money and power and position? Are you giving up your family because you're so locked in your job? Are you giving up your wife because you're so needy of an affair? Are you, you know, what are you doing? Are, are you living well or are you succumbing to all of these temptations? Because you're being measured now. We're in the examination stage. We've always been in the examination stage. There isn't anything else going on, not really. But now it's urgent and it's final. This is the final examination. This is when we graduate or don't. And the way in which that happens is that it, it, just imagine this model. This is the model I use. It's only a metaphor. But let's, let's just get that we're on a stream or a river. We're all moving on a fast-flowing river. And, and there's nothing that we can do to swim against the tide. We can't swim back. We can't get out of the river. We have to swim with the tide of change. Now, we can move a bit to the left and a bit to the right. You know, we have that power of will if we stoke it up and find the will to move that. And in every single decision point about whether to succumb to temptation or whether to do the right thing and be optimistic and loving and kind, at every single opportunity to make that decision, that's like swimming against the tide of one side and forcing yourself into the other side. If, if it's a temptation that you have to overcome, then you're using your strength of will to move yourself to the side that you choose. But it takes effort. Now, as we come closer and closer and closer to the main event, it will become more and more obvious that we're being sucked. There's a force of suction that's drawing us one way or the other. If we constantly reaffirm negative scenarios, we constantly interpret life as a, a frightening event, and we should be fearful because that's the only sensible thing to do, then we'll be drawn to that whirlpool that's sucking us in. And that's the fearful one. And you'll be with other fearful people and, and you know, Right now, you, all you have to do is to look at the news to realize that that one's the most popular to talk about. But there is another one, and that's for the people that are kind and loving and, and optimistic. I think that's probably the most important word of all, optimistic. And we have to struggle a bit to swim into that tide. But it has its own suction. And if you reaffirm again and again and again goodness, then you'll be drawn into that whirlpool. And the one whirlpool takes you, let's say, down into the dark regions of constant fear and competition and anger and horrible things like that. And if you actually constantly affirm light, 
then you'll be drawn into the company of people who are also constantly affirming light, and you'll exclude the others from your life. And that one goes up, metaphorically speaking, and it goes into the light, and that's the transmutation. That's how we transmute from being on this river of a bit of this and a bit of that, a bit of darkness, a bit of light, into this something else, which is just light. We're being taken to a, a better place. And all we have to do is to affirm the light, affirm our choice to go to that better place, which does not seem to be a better place at all to those in the other whirlpool. They like their whirlpool. <laughs> That's why they keep on giving it their attention. They like all this drama. They like to feel fear and anger and blame and powerlessness. That's their choice. That's their free will choosing itself. You know, but our choice is, is to be optimistic, you know, for faith, to have faith. And that's the path through all this maelstrom that's just about to unfold in the world. Optimism, faith, joy, love, goodness. Then we're safe. Hang out with similar people. That's how it works. Choose your people carefully now. Choose your activities carefully now. Good luck. <laughs>